Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Uh, right today we're looking at another heavy support for the uh, Tilnid learning curve and we're going to be looking at the Tyranna site. Uh, now this effectively is one of the newer models, not actually in the codex, it came out afterwards. Um, but it's basically our beloved drop pod back for the Tyranids, uh, which is an absolute godsend for the army. Um, not an essential thing, but uh, certainly um, very, very useful to have these available to us. Now, you probably see from the model in front of you, this isn't the original one. This is my um, old Mycetic Spore conversion, which I had, because obviously we never had the model. So this is a plasma hatcher um, from Mecha Blocks. They don't actually make these anymore, I'm afraid, but um, I've got quite a number of these, uh, which I had originally as um, the Mycetic Spores, and I've obviously recently converted them up into the Tyrannocyte. Now, I do have some videos in the archives of how I did that, so um, I'll put a link in the description below just in case you're interested. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the stats then. So, uh, 75 points, uh, weapon skill 2 and ballistic skill 2, strength 5 and toughness 5, 6 wounds, initiative 3 with 3 attacks, uh, leadership 8, and a 4 plus save. Now, um, even though they're in the heavy support, support uh, slot, they don't actually take up a heavy support choice in your army list. Um, and on top of that, um, although obviously your different units can take this pod um, and use it to come down in, um, it's not actually like a dedicated transport as such. So in theory you can actually take the pods by themselves if you wanted to without taking up the heavy support choice and just like drop them in empty um, without having to take an additional unit. So that could potentially be an option. Um, now the pods, they must deep strike, and they use standard deep strike rules, so you will still be coming on from turn two onwards, depending on your reserve roll. So there's no, like, the Space Marine drop pod um, idea, so you can't come in on turn one. Um, now, once they're down, they uh, have the drift special rule, which is actually pretty nice. Now you can't run and you can't charge, but what you can do is you can move uh, so once you're down, in the next turn you're able to move, um, which is great because it helps you get in range for the, the gun options that it has. Um, now it is a monstrous creature, so it does mean that uh, if your opponent wishes to do so, they can actually assault you, and you'll actually have a, a, a chance to assault them back. As I said, it's got three attacks, initiative three. Of course, it's got a, quite a low weapon skill, but uh, it gives you half a chance. Now the main difference between this pod and the previous pod that we had, the Mycetic Spore, um, is its toughness. So there's a big note there that it's toughness 5, uh, which is really great because it means it can't be instant death, only with strength 10 weapons, um, obviously force weapons, blah blah blah. But um, you know, from shooting attacks, so the old pod was able to, to basically, you're able to take all its wounds out with a strength 8 gun, with well, this one you need to, uh, you need strength 10 to do that, which is quite nice. And on top of that, you've got more wounds, so six wounds. Now, the old pod was only three wounds. Now, having said that, there's a big price difference. of so 75 points for this pod, and the previous one was 40 points. But it has some nice gun options. So this guy comes with Instinctive Fire Special Rule. So at the end of the shooting phase, um, but before all the morale um, is done, you have a chance for the, the pod to fire. Now it has to shoot um, at its nearest target. Now there's a bit of ooh and ah about the rules regarding whether it's a monstrous creature and can shoot all of its blasts at one target, whether you can shoot at separate targets, or you have to shoot at separate targets, etc. I'm not going to get that into that now in this video because I don't want this video to be about the rules, the rules argument that there is. Uh, so you play it how you want to play it, that, that's fine. Uh, but effectively, um, you have three gun options. So it comes as standard for your 75 points with Death Spitters. Now the main issue that you have with that, although it is obviously keeping the points down, is that they are Ballistic Skill 2. So you're going to be needing 5s to get those Death Spitter, spitter bullets out. Um, so for 25 points you have two gun options. And one is the Venom Cannon which gives you the 36 inch uh, strength 6 AP4 blast and the second gun is the Barb Strangler which gives you the 36 inch 
uh, strength 4 AP5 large blast but with pinning. They're both very nice guns and just the fact that obviously even though these ballistic skill 2 being the Pi template it sort of almost ignores the, the lower ballistic skill. So I, I would pretty much always say if, as long as you've got the points of course to, to take that upgrade because having those guns on there makes this pod a lot more threatening. So which upgrade do you take? And I think the, my, it's, it's a funny one this actually, my initial uh, reaction was to take the Venom Cannons, because uh, obviously they're Strength 6, which is great. Um, but a little bit like Aceface uh, said from um, his, on his channel, go and check out Aceface's channel, he's a great Tyranny player. Um, you know, the, the Barb Stranglers um, are actually very, very good. Um, you know, five large pie templates pinning really awesome um, and I, I switched over from using venom cannons to using those pie plates and although they are very good one of the issues which I came across with them during play testing is what your opponent can easily do is make sure that they put um, a vehicle or something that those weapons can't touch and then renders your guns useless because you can only shoot at the nearest target um, so I've actually switched back to Venom Cannons purely because at least it's with the Strength 6 you know at least as long as you're not armor 13 um, you've got a chance of obviously even uh, hurting a vehicle and don't forget you can still move so when it comes down um, it goes to the Drift Special Rule uh, which basically means you can't run and you can't charge but you can move so you are actually able to move and redirect your shots uh, to make sure that you're trying to hit the right armour of a vehicle, for example, if your know, opponent did do that. And obviously, if they put um, a land raider, you know, that's the closest target, then there's nothing you can do about that. So I'm still, I'm an R-ring, to be honest, between the two guns. I actually like both guns. I think they both work quite well. Um, and if I'm having one, uh, more than one pod, I will actually split my pods between the two different gun options. So it gives me the best of both worlds, really. Um, but, yeah, I suppose it depends on your environment. Probably, maybe, if you're in an environment where your opponents do take a lot of vehicles, then you might actually be better having the Venom Cannon on. But if you're up against, obviously, more um, infantry-based armies, then you could potentially opt for the Barb Strangler. So that's a personal choice. But I would 100% would say it's worth the 25 points. It does make this a 100 point unit. But unlike just a normal drop pod, you know, it is going to come down. Whatever's going to get out is going to be threatening. But also the pod is going to be threatening. The pod is a very nice unit on its own. Um, so how are we going to use it? What type of things are we going to put in there? Well, there are a few things that you can't put in there because it does have some special transport rules. Uh, so effectively you can have um, up to 20 uh, small griblies or one monstrous creature. So what you can't put in there is a Carnifex Brood. Um, and you can't put um, a Tyrant or the Swarm Lord with its guard. You can put a Tyrant in there, you can put a Swarm Lord in there, but you can't have it with its guard. Um, so things that go in here quite nicely are either... I think I've said in the previous videos when I've gone through them, um, but for example, the uh, Termagants, potentially with some of those Gants being upgraded to the bigger gun, can be very, very useful coming down in this pod. You could put things like Carnifex in there. Um, as I said, potentially a Tyrant in there, maybe Swarm Lord, although I'm still unmanaring about the Swarm Lord in a pod. I have tried it, it's okay. Um, I don't know this is the best thing in there. I'm finding the best thing to put in the pods are almost like suicide units. Zone tropes are great in a pod. Get them coming down into the battle. They've got their 3 plus save. Uh, something which is more th throw awayable as such, if that's actually a word. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Swarm Lord in a pod, you know, is a big commitment of points. Um, as a big commitment, probably going to be your Warlord. And whether you just want to pod him down, it could work, it's a great distraction, but I, I personally am finding that the more suicide type unit, units are, are work quite well in the pods. Um, two or three pods works really well, 
you've obviously got to bear in mind the points level that you're playing at. So you've got to make sure you've got enough points to be able to play that, fill the pods up and still have enough on the table uh, to do whatever you need to do with the rest of the army. And I think, as I said, we're looking at individual units here, um, but what we do really need to do is we need to, in the future, look at building army lists and using the individual units together as a whole um, and how we sort of go about taking the choices. Um, so this series um, is going to expand um, above and beyond just looking at individual units. So hopefully we can come together with everything that we've learned during the curve process. Okay, so um, that's it for the drop pod, the Tyrannocyte. Um, really, really a great addition to the Tyranid Codex. And um, I certainly would suggest one or two of them at your disposal um, is going to be very useful. Okay, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.